Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord who God's life. So, baptism unites you to Jesus. That's Romans 6. That's Galatians 3. Baptism now saves you. That's 1 Peter 3. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. That's Mark 16. And when we hear these things, um, I don't know why it is that old Adam would always take the things that God gives us and set them against each other. Oh wait, I do know why. It's to try and get out of one of them. (laughs) It's so that we can take this gift of baptism and then somehow use that to somehow act as a weapon against God's other gifts. In other words, so you're saying if I'm baptized, united with Jesus, saved, I should definitely do all of the things that God says pull me away from him. That'd be fine, right? Because, you know, this is clearly a buffet and I'll pick what I want and I want to eat macaroni and cheese, but no vegetables. I want baptism and then never to have to come back to church. I want baptism and then to live in gross and unrepentant sin. I want baptism and then to cast off the one true God for idols. It's every bit as backwards as saying that you want to do good works and hear God's word in church but don't want the baptism that unites you to him. You see, these things were never actually meant to work against each other. This is not a buffet. This is not pick one. This is God working one good saving will together because God is not um, a schizophrenic. He has one will and that is to save you. And so all of the things that he gives you, they work together for that goal. God does not give you gifts as diverging paths. This is one merciful Lord at work. Faith receives baptism because God promises to work through it. Faith holds on to baptism, clings to baptism, trusts in baptism as the place that God works to save us. That is not a way around God's word. That is God's word joined to water for you so that you can be closer to it, not farther from it. This is what Luther means when he writes in the large catechism where faith is wanting It, namely baptism, remains a mere unfruitful sign. You see, baptism gives new life, but new life is fed. Otherwise, we would just run around town with super soakers yelling in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But it's a monstrous thing to create new life and then leave it outside to starve. What is wonderful, though, is that God doesn't give us two burdens, baptism and then hearing his word, law and gospel. He gives us complementary gifts. See, things do go better when you don't sin, but when you do, you have forgiveness in baptism. Things do go better when you don't doubt or fear or question who you are. But when you do, you have an identity in baptism. You are a child of God, daily washed clean, daily made holy, and the God who would do all of these good things for you. And then I can tell the truth. Vegetables are good for my body, but eating enough of them isn't the sign of me being alive. That's actually a lot simpler to check. Hey, alive. Haven't eaten enough vegetables yet today. I'll work on that. Hey, I'm baptized. That means that I don't need to measure my works. That means I don't need to measure how many times I've been in church as if I have enough punch cards to somehow merit one free salvation. It means I'm baptized and God gives me good gifts. And so if he's the one giving it, I want to be a part of it. But more than anything, I just, well, by the grace of God, by the work of the Holy Spirit, trust that God's gifts do what they say they do. Thanks be to God.